everybody, and welcome to the Ozark Sports Report Podcast. I'm here with the head coach of the Crane Pirates, Coach Brian Harmon. And for today's show, we're going to be doing another weekly recap with the head coach of the Crane Pirates, Coach Brian Harmon. Recap of the games from the past week. The Pirates went on and played Spokane and defeated them 21 to nothing. Then they went to Clever for the SWCL Championship and won the SWCL Championship by defeating Clever 5-4. to And then they came back to Tootie Parsons Memorial Stadium to play their conference rival of Marionville and defeated them by a final score of 5-4 to once again. Coach, what was the main strategy coming into this week with Spokane, Clever, and Marionville? Well, as always, we want to come in, we want to play good defense, and uh, you know, pitching is always the key. We want to work ahead of hitters and not give free bases to them. And I uh, felt like we did a good job with that this week. We uh, Our three-game streak of no errors, we had an airless week on the varsity level, and that was impressive because if you remember how we opened the season where we were really kicking the ball around that really is a big change from that. So, you know, uh, very very proud of the defense we've been playing lately. Now with the defense playing really well, what are the advantages that you saw from the games between Clever, Spokane, and Marionville? Well, I thought, I thought all three nights uh, we came out and asserted ourselves. Uh, Marionville was the only one that we, you know, we – we were a little flat coming in, and I was afraid of that, knowing, you know, with the emotional win we'd had the night before. I know I was, I didn't even play in it, but I was emotionally drained from it. And so, you know, once that adrenaline kicked back in after the first couple innings, I think we turned things back up and got our intensity back and, you know, really played well after that. Now with those advantages that you saw, what were the disadvantages that you saw from the three games between Spokane, Clever, and Marionville? Uh, well, some of the negatives is we, we still gave them too many free bases at times. You know, we, we leadoff walks kill you, and four-pitch leadoff walks really kill you. Those almost always score. So we just have to, you know, limit those, cut those down, whether it's, you know, maybe taking a little longer bullpen or whatever we need to do to fix those things. Now with those disadvantages that you saw, what are the corrections you're going to be making from the game against Marionville until the next game that's going to be up against Pleasant Hope? Uh, well, uh, both Marionville and Clever's pitchers did a great job of keeping us off balance and using the off speed, and uh, I felt like we really adjusted late in those games to that. So that's something else you know we're going to try to keep correcting and try to keep improving at is uh, you know doing better with the mixing up of, of fastballs and off speed, and you know just we we go up there hunting our pitch, and if we if, you know if you don't miss your pitch when you get it, then the other type of pitches aren't really going to pick you apart. No, those corrections, who would be your player of the week that you would pass that award to from this week from the Spokane game, the Clever game, and the Marionville game? Well, uh, hard to give to an individual player, but I can tell you uh, definitely a play of the week was the three-run home run by Colton Elder. He just, you know, comes up. They hadn't pitched to him all day. He comes up with first base open, runs on second and third, and we're all wondering, oh, they're probably not going to pitch to him this time either, and I guess they decided to. They felt that, like their matchup with Ustler was a good one. They were going to go after him, and, you know, he made them pay. He hit he hit the ball about as, you know, he's hit a lot of home runs in his career, but he hit the ball about as hard as I've ever seen him hit a baseball. It was a no-doubter. Now you guys got Pleasant Hope, Morrisville, and you wrap up the season with Reed Spring. What's going to be your game plan coming into those three games coming up this week on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday against Morrisville, Pleasant Hope, and Reed Spring? Well, we're really not going to change anything because, you know, I, I harp on them about, you know, you don't change what's working for you. And, you know, we've played well lately. We've uh, kind of been on a hot streak, so we're going to continue to try to do the things, try to assert ourselves a little better than we have. You know, the the Clever game and the Marionville game, we fell behind in both of those. And, you know, maybe hop out there and uh, hopefully score first, put pressure on the other team and work from there. Now, if you had any words to say to the head coaches of the Spokane Owls, the coach Dalton Kelly, the Clever Blue Jays of Justin Snyder and the head coach of the Marionville Comets coach Jason Gross what would your words be to those three coaches that you guys played against from the past week well uh, they uh, all or three are good coaches all three do a good job uh, I will say that you know last week uh, we played three teams and I was taller than two of the coaches that that doesn't happen very often does it Adam but uh no, these guys do a great job. Coach Gross, I've gotten to know him over the last two years. Coach Kelly, I've gotten to know him this year. And Coach Snyder, I've known way too long already. But, you know, we, we're we're rivals, competitors. But, you know, when the game's over and before the game starts, we're friends. And, you know, we just it's just like playing anything against your friends. You know, you really want to win those games just as bad as you do anybody else. 
and I just would say to them, you know, keep doing what you're doing, and good luck the rest of the way. Other than Marionville and the district, if we play them, I'm not going to tell them good luck to that one. But other than that, you know, just go out and represent yourself well. I'm here with the assistant coach of the Crane Pirates, Coach Clay Stump, and also he is the hitting coach for the Crane Pirates. Clay, what was the main objection for your 21 to nothing win over Spokane? Uh, our main objection is to um, just hit the ball hard, um, take good at bats. Make sure we're hitting the ball where it's placed and make sure we're uh, seeing the ball pretty well. Now with those 21 runs, what was your strategy that you gave your hitters to beat Spokane tonight? Uh, make sure we're hunting our pitch, um, not giving in to the pitcher's pitches and hitting pitches that we like and mainly just not missing the fastball. Now you guys got Clever tomorrow at Clever. What was going to be the main ingredient that you're going to be bringing to the dinner table against Clever? Good at bats. I'm um, just making sure we're going up there and, again, seeing the ball. We try to keep it simple. Um, just because it's another team doesn't mean we really want to change a whole lot. Um, we just want to see the ball well and make sure that we're in it where it's placed. Now, if you had any words to say to head coach Dalton Kelly of the Spokane Owls, what would your words be to the head coach of the Spokane Owls, Dalton Kelly? Um, that I like what he's doing with the program. Um, I like that he's... He's still pushing the kids and uh, really teaching them the game of baseball. I think that's lost a lot with um, some baseball teams around the area is they're not learning the game. They're just learning how to win or, you know, do a certain job. He's really trying to teach the game over there, and I like that about, about him. Thanks for taking the time with us, Coach Stumpf, and best luck to you guys tomorrow at Clever. Thanks. I'm here with the head coach of the Crane Pirates, Coach Brian Harmon, after a – Really good win tonight over the Clever Blue Jays. Coach, what was the main strategy coming into this game against Clever? Well, uh, Coach Stump and I talked about it a lot, and the main strategy was we knew we knew it was for the conference championship. The players knew it, but we didn't want to focus on that. We just want to focus on winning another game, and they came through. You know, they uh, their uh, DP threw a great game and had us flustered, and you know we scratched across a couple in the sixth. They got them right back in the seventh, and then. You know, Elder just did his thing. He just uh, he he planted it way out there. Elder threw six innings of good baseball tonight, only allowing four runs. What would your words be to your starting pitcher tonight of Colton Elder? <laughs> it's just gutsy, you know. And it's it's funny to hear you say starting pitcher Colton Elder because this is his second start of the year. You know, he's been a reliever up till now, and that's kind of been the plan. You know, conserve and and make him you know full strength this time of year. And he did that. He's he's our horse. You know, he didn't win a game all fall because he pitched into hard luck. I believe he's five and one now in the spring, two two as a starter, three as a reliever, and you know, he's, he, he's just a tough one. And then with your big bats that came through in the late innings to beat Clever, what was the main strategy that you told your guys before stepping up to the plate to deliver those big runs and those big hits in the later stages of this ball game against Clever? Uh, same thing I've been saying all year is we, you know, we fight, we fight. If we do lose, we lose fighting. And, you know, they just don't, you know, Bryson Brandstetter bloops one in, Wyatt Vaught bloops one in. They make the throw home, gets Wyatt into scoring position. You know, that was huge at the time. It turns out, you know, everybody was in scoring position when Elder steps to the plate, including himself. And he just, uh, you know, the guys just executed a game plan. You know, we struck out way too much way too early, but it was against a great pitcher, and we, we kept a plan and we executed now you guys go home tomorrow to play Marionville. What's going to be the main game plan? What are you going to bring to the dinner table against Marionville tomorrow at Tootie Parsons Memorial Stadium? Well, what we have to do is bring energy. We have to enjoy this tonight, and then tomorrow we've got to just focus that energy on Marionville and make you know make things happen there. And you know they're a good team. They're in our district, so you know we got to go out and do what we can to try to make a statement. Now, one of the big things with this school of clever, they're departing the SWCL and going into the Big Mid Lakes Conference next year. What would your words be to head coach Justin Snyder and the Clever Blue Jays as they depart the SWCL onto the Mid-Lakes and about this game as well? Uh, as far as them leaving the conference, you know, I'd say good luck where they, they're going because, uh, you know, they're leaving a great baseball conference for just just another great baseball conference. And, you know, they're doing it because of football, and that's great. And, you know, we're going we're gonna to miss them as conference opponents, but we're still going to play them. You know, we're going to keep each other on our schedules because it's a, it's a good rivalry, Coach Coach Snyder and us are friends, and and we you know we work hard to try to beat each other, and it's a it's a good healthy competition. So, and tonight's game, you know, I mean, it was just a battle of two two well matched teams. 
Thanks for taking the time with us, Coach Harmon. Congratulations on the conference win, and we will talk to you tomorrow on Wednesday against Marionville. Thank you, and I want to say congratulations to Clever Seniors. Tonight's their senior night, and it's been a pleasure to compete against them the last four years. I'm here with the senior pitcher tonight and the winning pitcher tonight against Clever, Colton Elder, who had a very good game, only giving up four runs in about five to six innings pitched. Uh, Colton, what was the main strategy coming into this game against Clever? Uh, the main strategy was to just throw strikes and let them put the ball in play and let my defense work behind me. Now with your strategy of throwing strikes, letting your defense work behind you, what would you say to your defense that helped work behind you and gave up lots of scoreless innings of about two scoreless innings that you guys gave up, only allowing four runs? I was really proud of them. They did an excellent job. Uh, I'm pretty sure we had no errors tonight. They made the easy plays they needed to do, and it was just an outstanding job by them. Now you guys have Marionville coming up tomorrow at Tootie Parsons Memorial Stadium. What's going to be ma going to be the main strategy coming up tomorrow night against Marionville at Tootie Parsons? Uh, just come out with the same energy we had today. Uh, they're a huge rival for us, and I, no doubt that we'll come out fired up, and we'll just see who comes out on top. Now, if you had any words to say to your defense that, or your offense, that had those big innings that helped deliver those, those runs that helped beat Clever and your three-run home run, what would be the words that, to your defense that you had tonight for the defense that helped spark the big, the big innings tonight to beat Clever? Uh, we started out a little slow, but we started pulling it together finally, and we took out their starting pitcher and brought in their best, and that's exactly what we want to do in those situations, and we just capitalized. If you had any words to say to the head coach of the Clever Blue Jays and the team of the Clever Blue Jays, Justin Snyder and his team, what would your words be to Clever and his or Justin Snyder and his team? Uh, they did an outstanding job. They're killing it this year, and just good luck the rest of the year. And now, final question: Clever is going to be leaving the SWCL and going into the powerhouse of the Mid Lakes Conference, which is a very big conference. Lots of big schools along with Forsyth. Forsyth and Clever are going into that conference. What would your words be to Clever and Forsyth that go into that big conference next year? Uh, good luck and make some noise. Thanks for taking the time with us, Colton Elder. Congratulations on the conference championship, and we'll talk to you tomorrow against Marionville. Thank you. I'm here with the head coach of the Crane Pirates, Coach Brian Harmon, after a very, very great win tonight over the Maryville Comets. Actually, hard-fought win tonight over the Maryville Comets. Coach, what was the strategy coming into this game with you guys and the Maryville Comets? Uh, well, the strategy was to come and bounce back from last night. You know, I say bounce back, not that we lost, but you know, a lot of times after you get some kind of championship win, you come out the next night and you have a little letdown. And, uh, didn't feel the energy early, but we picked it up later. Their pitcher did a great job. Larkin did a good job keeping us off balance early. We battled through it. Uh, Wyatt Vaught didn't have his best stuff early, but he settled in and really, really went to dealing. And then, you know, turned it over to the hammer in the seventh inning, and Brent Williams gets another, another three-out save. And now, with the, with that win, or those two runs that scored that were scored in the bottom of the sixth inning, uh, what was the main topic that you taught? That you told your players on how to? deliver those two runs to seal the to seal the win over the Comets tonight? Well, that's the uh, advantage of being the home team. We would go to the bottom of the six, and I told my guys, I said, hey, we got six outs left to do something. They've only got three, so let's go out and perform where we can. And, uh, you know, just some clutch things. You know, Nick Brandon got down a really good bunt. They made a great play, got Darren Terrell at third. I mean, it was bang, bang. At that point, you know, you just don't know from there what's going to happen. And Bryson Brandstetter, you know, gets – gets down in the count comes up with a huge hit you know how the you know your number nine hitter you know he's not a typical nine hitter he's a run producer and burns the guy you know uh, I'm trying to score Heath quick from from first I know that you know that's our chance to get that run and take the lead and Heath comes up with a great slide to avoid the tag and get that go ahead run and uh, from there things went well and uh, you know like I said we handed over to Brent and he shut it down now you guys got Fordland com coming up tomorrow over in Webster County in Fordland. What's going to be the main strategy to deliver a win against Fordland tomorrow night in Webster County in Fordland? Uh, energy. We're going to have to create energy and uh, we're going to have to use that energy to get the job done. Uh, 
you know, we like I said, we come in without as much energy to start, and then after that, you know, things uh, took off for us. And number twenty, Wesley Breedlove. That uh, that things went really well for us, but uh, at, in the end, but we've got to come out. You know, Fordland's Fordland's a, a small team. They've got nine kids, but they got nine kids that can play baseball, and you know, we're gonna have our hands full. If you have any words to say to the head coach of the Marionville Comets, Coach G- Jason Gross. What would your final words be to the head coach of the Marionville Comets, Coach Jason Gross? Uh, coach Gross and I visited as the game was coming down to a close, and a- after we took the lead, he-, he made the same statement that I would have the inning before when they had the lead. Is, you know, however this ends, you know, it's a hard-fought game and you know, a really good shot that we're going to face each other again in a district tournament. They're, they're the three seed, we're the two. They've got to get past Billings, we get a bye. But you know, if they get past Billings, it's going to be a heck of an intense matchup. Thanks for taking the time with us, Coach Harmon. Enjoy this big win, and we will talk to you tomorrow at Fortland. Thank you, Adam. All right, that's going to wrap up our show for today. We hope you enjoyed our show, and we hope you enjoyed us sitting down with the head coach of the Korean Pirates, Coach Brian Harmon. If you want to stay connected with their social media, be sure to like them on Facebook, follow them on Twitter. Their Twitter is at Crane underscore Coach. Once again, that's Crane underscore Coach on Twitter. If you want to stay connected with us through our social media, be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and check out our website. Our website is ozarksportsreport.wixsite.com slash ozarksportsreport. So for one final time, I want to say thank you to the head coach of the Grand Pirates, Coach Brian Harmon, for sitting down with us. And I want to say thank you all for joining in to today's show. We hope to see you guys on the next show. Have a good day, everybody.